Hello, everyone. My name is Lu Yu. I'm from Beijing Normal University, and you can call me Victor. Today, I'm going to talk about my research on AI-driven robot for education. Before that, let me introduce my university and my research center first. So uh, Beijing Normal University is one of the most prestigious university in China, especially in education and the psychology research. And we are currently trying to promote the transition of educational public service from the digital stage to the internet stage in our country. And uh, we have a research center that mainly focuses on utilizing AI technologies for the education purpose. So the name of the center is called Advanced Innovation Center for Future Education. So currently we are hosting 140 plus full-time researchers and engineers. We already published uh, 300 plus journal articles and also working with some partners from overseas like CMU, UCL and the University of Helsinki. And I'm currently working as a faculty member in in the School of Educational Technology. And I'm also leading an AI team at the Advanced Innovation Center for Future Education. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about two projects in my, uh, in my team. And the first one is about the interactive robot for subject learning. And the second one is about the virtual dialogue robot for moral education. So let me uh, give the first one the first one, this project is actually mainly targets on designing an intelligent robot systems that can be directly used and deployed in different learning contexts. And the designed robot actually provides the personalized and autonomous learning services to the individual learners. And the design is mainly driven by the latest AI technologies, for example, the natural language processing and the machine learning. And also we are using some uh, established psychological theory called the self-determination theory, SDT. So this is a theoretical framework for robot design using the SDT theory. So you know, uh, normally the learner's psychological needs can be regarded as into three uh, perspectives, including the competency, the autonomy, and also the relatedness. So we are trying to satisfy those different psychological needs and uh, it would further enhance the learner's self-motivation and meanwhile optimize the learning and the interaction experiences of the learners. And eventually using uh, this theory, we can improve the learning performance and the effectiveness of the learners. And this is actually the theoretical framework for the robot design. And uh, you can see horizontally, we have uh, four layers. So the bottom one is the data aggregation layer and the upper one is called the learner model layer. This layer mainly uh, builds the different models to capture the learner's data. For example, the knowledge tracing model and also the emotion face recognition model. The upper one is called the natural language processing layer. It's mainly in charge of the natural interaction with the learner and uh, in this layer, we have the several different uh, engines, including the question generation engine, the question answering engine, as well as the conversational agent engine. So they all in charge of uh, provide the interaction services to the learners. And the top layer is called the learner robot interaction layer. They are mainly consist of uh, different hardware, like the touch screen, LCD display, the arm neck actuators, as well as a 3D camera. And the vertically, different part of this uh, framework, trying to satisfy the different psychological needs of the learners. For example, we're using the learner profile data together with some emotion face recognition model, as well as some conversational agent to satisfy the learner's relatedness requirement. And uh, also, we build a learner's model using the different deep learning techniques. Uh, here, for example, we build a knowledge tracing model to estimate the student's st uh, knowledge state. And here, we are not only using the deep learning and also the learner's performance data, we also include some of the 
the domain knowledge information. For example, the prerequisite relations among different entities and concepts in one subject. And uh, moreover, we're actually using design and using some knowledge graph uh, to support the question answering. And also on those knowledge graphs, we, we put the no, no, uh, learner's knowledge states into the knowledge graph and using the different color to visualize the, the, no, the learner's knowledge states and help the learner and teachers to understand the, the learning progress. And we have done some comprehensive evaluations on the design robot. And uh, the experiment results shows that the advanced knowledge learning actually have been improved, significantly improved. And also the robot can better motivate the learners and satisfy their psychological needs. And also we observe that the learners uh, favorite some of the interactive functions like the question answering and also some casual chatting with the robot. So this is a very promising robot, promising research result. And here's a video showing the robot, how, work, how the robot work with the learners. And it takes like, uh, just a few minutes. Let me play it for you. I am Teacher Go. I will be your learning partner from today. May I know your name? I am Xiao Yu. Great, Xiao Yu. Let me remember you. Okay. Glad to know you and hope to see you frequently. Please be closer and let me know who you are. Welcome back, Xiaoyu. Nice to see you again. I am your teacher, Go. Xiaoyu, which subject do you want to learn today? I want to learn biology. This is your personal knowledge map for biology. According to your current knowledge proficiency and status, I recommend you to strengthen your weakness on photosynthesis. Wow, you know me well. I do feel confused on photosynthesis. The raw materials, products, conditions, and places of photosynthesis. Mr. Gao, I have a question. People always say that plants are green factories. Then what products are made in this factory and how are they made? You look puzzled. Anything I can help? Wow, I do have some questions in my mind. You are so brilliant. Tell me and I will help you. Except for green plants, any other living beings conduct photosynthesis? Yes, many species like cyanobacteria, purple bacteria, as well as some photosynthetic bacteria, and even animals like Splicia do that. I am so happy to see you keep thinking and learning together. Thank you. I want to take a break. Sure. Have a relaxing time and you will perform better after that. Okay. It's time to study. Achievement is founded on diligence and wasted upon recklessness. Let us keep learning. Okay. I find that you need to review the triangle concept in math. I have prepared several learning resources in different types. Feel free to choose one. Want to take a look at some other resources? Ok, 
Okay, let's start. Triangle Sum Theorem and Application. Let's see how to apply the Triangle Sum Theorem on simple calculation. First, let's recall the definition of Triangle Sum Theorem. I, they recorded all your learning process in this semester. Let us do some analysis on your performance. Wow, that's great. I can't wait to see my report after working so hard. Do I make any progress? This is your diagnosis report on the subjects that you perform better. It shows that you have made a great progress in math. And now it is your advantage over other subjects. Really? Any more details? This is your diagnosis report that gives more details. Let me know whatever you done to understand inside. You have done a good job this semester. Keep up the good work. Sure, thanks a lot for your help. Yeah, so this is a uh, how or robot interact and uh, help the learners. And uh, this is uh, some selected papers and patents. And uh, if you are interested in, you can look at them. And uh, our robot design actually also received some awards from the international conference like EGK and also e-learning forum Asia. And also it has been reported by different media like the central television in China and also the Korean Educational Broadcasting System, EBS. Okay, so this is uh, the first robot we are working on. And the second robot is actually a virtual robot. Specifically, it's a virtual dialogue robot for moral education. You know, the moral education refers to guiding the students to develop the noble values, such as the honesty and the responsibility. And meanwhile, trying to avoid the students' problem behaviors resemble the peer bullying or lying to their parents. So the problem behavior actually are commonly seen in schools and families. And uh, thus the, the moral education is vital to the healthy growth of students. The, however, the moral education can be regarded as an interdisciplinary field that requires knowledge from psychology, pedagogy, and the sociology. But unfortunately, most of the teachers and parents, especially the young ones, they don't have the expertise in all such domains. So that is why we are trying to design some of the dialogue system or dialogue robot, try to help those uh, teachers and the parents. And uh, this is a theoretical framework for this robot design. And uh, we know there are some problem behaviors and based on the psychological theory, they can be categorized into different uh, problems like the internalizing or externalizing problems. And uh, those problems actually uh, will result as the students uh, need deficiencies. So uh, based on the identified need deficiencies, the robot would recommend some intervention and strategy to the, uh, to the uh, teachers and parents. And also we adopt some of the theory called the case-based reasoning theory, CBR theory, to identify the need deficiencies behind the different problem behaviors. So the CBR theory emphasizes on utilizing the previous similar cases and experiences to solve the individual problems. And we already collected around over 4,000 4, high quality and successful moral education cases from the heterogeneous sources including the paper-based documents, the online forum, and teacher interviews. And using those uh, information and also using the, the CBR series, we further can identify the different categories of the need deficiency. For example, the, the safety needs deficiency, the belongings and love, the esteem, and also the cognition needs deficiencies. And uh, besides the theoretical framework, well, this is a technical framework for this robot design. And uh, as you'll see, we have three layers. The bottom one, we mainly collect the data from the different sources. 
and those data are mainly the cases for the more, more education. The upper one is called the knowledge graph layer. They, they, they mainly define the schema and also do the knowledge acquisition. And based on the knowledge graph, we build a dialogue system. So this is a typical dialogue system techniques, including the natural language understanding, the dialogue state tracking, policy learning, as well as the natural language generation. And uh, for example, for the dialogue system layer, we use some DQN-based policy learning to do the dialogue state tracking and to better understand the, 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 the problems of the students. And here is a short video to show you how our system works. Please enjoy. Hey, Miss Lee, are there any students in your class who always break the rules? It is really annoying that they just don't care what you are saying. Yes, definitely. But recently, I have found a great assistant, which helps me a lot in such cases. What is that? Here it is, an intelligent assistant that can help parents and teachers solve problems of behavior management. At that time, I just started to work with 8th grade students, so I had no experience at all. There was one student in my class who always dozed off or played his cell phone secretly. I've talked to him several times, but he just remained silent and did not change his behavior. I tried to look for solutions on the internet, but failed to find any useful resources. Then, I found this app. AI Power Teaching Assistant for Behavior Management. It is developed based on research on knowledge graphs and dialogue systems in the field of artificial intelligence and consists of three modules regarding behavior management, data collection, knowledge graph, and dialogue system. The data was collected from a variety of professional sources including plenty of outstanding cases posted on the Model Teacher in China platform and interviews with experienced teachers from primary and secondary schools across the country. In the meantime, professionals constructed the problem-solving framework based on behavior management theories and then came up with the knowledge graph through structuralizing outstanding cases into this framework. The dialogue system acquires information from students, identifies their problems, and intelligently recommends solutions through four major steps. Natural language understanding, dialogue state tracking, dialogue policy learning, and natural language generation. What should I do if I have a student who falls asleep or plays cell phone in class? It seems your student has violated discipline in class. Does the student have any other problematic behaviors? After the assistant asked questions in return, I was reminded of other possible problems the boy has shown before. The student seldom does homework and sometimes scribbles all over the exercise book. The student also seems to have problems with learning attitude. Is the student a boy or a girl? A boy. Boys are relatively active. Which kind of parenting style does he experience? What is parenting style? Parenting style refers to the combination of emotional atmosphere and attitude parents pass on to children through education. There are four styles. Authoritarian parenting, authoritative parenting, permissive parenting, and uninvolved parenting. Hi, Miss Lee. I'm so sorry for the mischief caused by my child and all the inconveniences caused. As parents, we are very busy with work and most of the time we are not around to monitor him. His questions made me rethink if I truly understand my students. It's the involved parenting style. Your description. The student does not feel cared for by his family and may want to attract more attention from others. 
I would suggest using the emotional edification method to make the student feel cared for. For example, you could show concern for him and organize some activities to let him feel the warmth of the class. What is emotional edification method? It refers to a way that teachers adopt certain educational strategies to imperceptibly influence students and affect students in an unconscious way. You are also welcome to use the Learning Center, which provides other resources for behavior management. I summarize and extract the overall framework from practical cases to solve the problems in behavior management. Moreover, I also provide a number of professional videos and case resources that originate from practical experiences of teachers. The data statistics module uses data analysis to reveal the underlying regularities. It includes countrywide statistics on interest in behavior management, frequency of common problematic behavior, as well as the relationship between problematic behavior and its causing factors. Applied methods that I learned from this assistant on my student. He has improved a lot, and his homework is getting neater and tidier. Okay, so this is a, a very short demo showing how the dialogue system works with the teachers. And here are some of the selected papers and patents on this project. Okay, so I guess this is the end of my talk. And uh, here is the, the live website. And you are welcome to browsing it. And also this is my email address. And I hope uh, if you have any questions, you can send to me. And I'm very glad to discuss with you. Thank you.